grace and peace be to you, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I wanted to share a refrain from a song. I left my heart in. You heard that one? Yeah. Um, I have a different story to tell. I was out this past weekend, the weekend ago, with my brother who lives in the Bay Area. And I had a different experience. I broke my heart out in San Francisco. Um, for you who have not been to this beautiful place, uh, some of the most beautiful uh, landscapes and, and interesting buildings, and of course, uh, a vibrant culture, it broke my heart. And it broke my heart because as I was coming into San Francisco with my brother, we were going to a, a volleyball tournament at a Catholic parish uh, where uh, his son, my nephew, Alan, was playing. And it's near the Tenderloin District, which is a tougher part of San Francisco. It always has been, perhaps always will be. But in coming there, um, the amount of people who are deeply mentally ill on the streets is overwhelming. The amount of poverty and homelessness is overwhelming. And the levels of crime, it's overwhelming. Um, I hope you hear it's not because I'm blaming them. I'm just saying that's how it exists. My brother had tried to uh, not make me such an easy target. He gave me a couple rules. He said, okay, here's the two rules. You cannot wear your Husker hat. <laughs> I thought that would look me, make me look really street smart, of course, but uh, this makes me look like a target. And then he gave me this other advice. Don't make eye contact. That's not the way I roll. I'm from Cumming County, a very friendly uh, county here in Nebraska, where as you drive down the road in the country uh, byways, we were extremely uh, old in our love for each other. We would raise two fingers off the steering wheel, right, as you're going past. We we're not just a single county, we were a double county. It was extremely, extremely old. And, and, and so I just wanted to say that, yes, to get through life in San Francisco, you almost have to not make eye contact. Because otherwise it's simply overwhelming. And so this week I wanted to preach about being resilient. The resurrection is a story of incredible resilience, right? So I was talking to a Christian out in the Bay Area as I was meeting new people, and somebody said, the greatest comeback story ever, right? You think that Jesus is dead, and yet here is the greatest news ever. He is alive. And and so in that, I was hoping for this uh, day to help share how to be resilient, how to bounce back. And yet I felt so incredibly disoriented. And I kind of froze up. Uh, one of the things that hit me was going down, we've been to Chinatown. And as you go there, there are a variety of vendors and uh, you know, some food shops and uh, just a variety of ways to enjoy the culture. But I saw the children afraid. I saw the parents bring them through, but the kids were afraid because of what they were seeing. Uh, just the, the cacophony of noise and sights and sounds. And so I want to share with you is one of the greatest ways to be resilient is to reclaim your identity. Know who you are. And it's so great as Christians, that phrase, who are you, is we have this tremendously firm foundation. Whose are you? We are children of children of God. This picture here describes, at least in some ways, this stump, right? Cut off. And yet what is growing is a, is a tender new expression of life. And this is who we are. I just wanted to reclaim that for, for myself and for you. We are children of God. And what's hit me for this week is the phrase, I, I've, I've always enjoyed this phrase, you've heard it, right? We've talked about children of God, but what hit me is I want to reclaim the last two words, of God. Not simply children understanding my dependency and our dependency upon God, but of the living God. I had used the phrase a couple weeks ago, I've been teasing my brother that he lives in this God-forsaken place, you know, known as the Bay Area, but I just, it came back upon me. 
Maybe people forsake the place, but not God forsaken place. And I, I pray for my own life is to be more bold. And when I'm disoriented, when I'm overwhelmed, and that happens to all of us, right? We get overwhelmed, we get disoriented, is to reclaim children of God, but with a uh, confidence in God's power, in God's ability, in God's incredible love for this world. And for you and for myself to take small but significant steps, we are not going to be the people who don't make eye contact. We're the people who make eye contact. I wanted to share a quick example about identity. As you live your life, um, being a pastor has an advantage. I get to wear this thing often called a clerical collar. I don't know if you know the history of clerical collar. This is a very stylized change of the clerical collar from its beginning. It actually uh, was, its inception was to be like a slave collar. Like if you've seen Roman slaves, right? And the image was that pastors are slaves to the gospel. It's gotten a wee bit more stylized. And, uh, but that's what we're, we're slaves. We're compelled. We serve God. And so wearing this gives me sometimes an advantage, sometimes not an advantage, but sometimes I just want to share a quick story. So I'm thinking about preparing for you to give you encouragement to reclaim that your children of the living God, of the most high God, the God who loves and animates life, and that we will not shirk away from the challenges and difficulties of life. And so this past Wednesday, I was going to uh, Bellevue Medical Center. And then as I was going, I was going to see Arnie uh, before he left the hospital. And I heard some person screaming. And uh, it, it was strange. I, I have to admit that. And I kind of looked over and I saw a group of people and there was one person screaming. And I was thinking, what is that? And I thought, well, I'll go see Arnie. And then I kind of made a little deal with God. I said, I'll go in with God and deal with Arnie and I come back if there's something I can help them or something. So as I'm walking, uh, probably 100 feet away from me, as I walked in, there was a woman in the uh, front lobby of the Bellwood Medical Center. And she looked at me and she goes, should we call the police? And I'll just say this. I took that as encouragement. This is serious. So, I walked back out. I wasn't prepared. I didn't know really what to say. Sometimes pastors use this line. I didn't know what my spiritual pickup line was going to be. Right? I didn't really know how to enter into this really strange circumstance. But after experiencing my heart be broken, I thought, you know what? So, as I lifted, I'm just sharing this. This is how it worked for me. I asked for God's help. Help me say the right things. And I entered in. And the person was yelling. I turned around and I said, excuse me, I'm Pastor Lowell. I was walking into the church. I was ready to treat this as a private matter, but can, can I help? Now the person who was yelling was quite surprised to see a big old pastor standing right next to her in a clerical collar. It stopped her, right? But what was happening was a family distraught because dad's dying. And two people want to use every mechanism possible to extend his life, and two don't. And isn't it strange out of love that there's this confusion and anger? We ended up praying. I asked if I could see Dad. They said, oh no, <laughs> don't do that. Uh, I guess he wasn't a man of faith. That's okay. But at this moment, in this place, I just prayed for God's peace to come from the midst. And at least I'll say this, there was no more help. I went in and talked to the chaplain as a matter of teamwork, basically saying, I hope I didn't mess it up. There's some people in the parking lot, I prayed for them and I gave them something to do, uh, which is they knew the person that was in uh, this great distress. Now, I share that to you, is I needed that person to say it was serious. Right? Because I was ready to do good things. Do good things for God. I, I'm saying to you, life is serious. What you see that is wrong is seriously wrong. If in your life you have an opportunity to bring the good news of God's love, to pray for people, to reduce suffering, 
to bring kind words of encouragement, to bring the power of God's love in the midst of the most difficult circumstances, you and I are called to do such. We, in our life, understand this as more real than a stump. God's love is for all. And this children of God identity for you and I helps. You, you and I will be disoriented. Life is that serious now. Just think of what's happened in the last 48 hours in, in our world. And yet, in the midst of that, I wanted to reclaim, to be resilient, to be able to bounce back and receive difficult things, is to reclaim your identity, my identity, as children of God. A strength and a love that has a fantastic purpose through Jesus Christ to reclaim and to heal this nation. So, it's kind of a simple way to describe it. When you're disoriented, I actually give thanks to God because I think when you're overwhelmed, you're actually looking. Don't get numbed out. Don't follow that simple advice. Don't make eye contact. That isn't who we are. When we are disoriented, we reclaim our identity as children of God. I wanted to give thanks to Lois Barr. She taught, one of our members taught a class yesterday to the church council. It was absolutely delightful and moving and interesting time to be with the church council members. And she's uh, going to teach in the fall uh, a book called Identity Matters, Discovering Who You Are in Christ by Terry Pardell. Just an excellent book. And so she uh, shared uh, this phrase, you are a loved child of God, L-O-V-E-D, loved child of God. But I didn't hear the D. And I'd just been to San Francisco, so I thought she said, you are a love child of God. <laughs> 1967, right? And, it, and I, I thought it was pretty scandalous. For you guys don't know what I'm talking about. You know, it's scandalous. Right? Scandalous love of God. And it just kind of energized me. I'm going to stay with that. Yes, I'm loved, but I'm a love child. It is scandalous that God loves me. It is beautifully scandalous that God loves you. It is wonderfully scandalous that God loves this world, and it is a message to share. And then I want to give one practical application for our church. We've expressed love by being the food pantry for Belgium, meaning the repository and the storage of food here. Many great things have happened by people bringing food, but there's a cumbersome thing where the food is distributed down in Washington Park, and so we have to transfer the food here to there. There's been a great development for the city, so the city has now entered into a new lease agreement with the Community Action Partnership, who helps in distribution of food and, and ministering to it. So there's a building down in Washington Park that now serves the pantry, right across from where it's distributed, I mean, right there. No more moving stuff. You know what? That's disorienting, because that's been part of the identity here, hasn't it? For many, many years. Uh, I remember that it used to be at St. James, and I heard about that story. 14 steps down, 14 steps back. This has been a tremendous improvement, right? But there's another improvement. So what should we do? Should we tear it down and get rid of it? I mean, that's certainly what I do. We clean up the property, more parking, more people invited. But I ask our church council and I ask you that in this disorienting time, what should we do with it? Maybe it's a chance to share some scandalous love with the community in new ways. Maybe it can be a resource center for people who are hurting in ways that need some time to think about, but could be incredibly provocative. After school program, community counseling center, a place of encouragement, a safe place. I, I don't know. I just know that I want to take what I think God has opened up in the scriptures of that we are children of God is to have the confidence and the, uh, the faith to stick with it, to share the scandalous love. Does that make sense? And in your own life, I ask in your periods of disorientation of life, is to say, thank you, God, for keeping me sensitive to the needs of this world. And I ask you to reclaim your identity as a child of God, of the living God, of the real God, of the God who reclaims you and me for the sake of this world. Our uh, simple phrase is bringing God's love, hope, and healing to our world. May this be our rallying cry. May the confidence of this understanding of our identity amplify and energize our ministry. Amen.